and look at me. <laughs> and to all the Scottish women and some of you men who have been campaigning about this for the last five years. Um, look, we here are here to be present, we're here to be counted, we're here to be heard, and we will be seen. There's nothing wrong with loving who you are, she said, cause it made you perfect, babe. Go ahead and honey, you'll go far. Listen to me when I say, all together, I'm beautiful in my way, cause God makes no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way. I was in Stirling and I just uh -huh. heard that this was going on and I really wanted okay. to get by and sort of document what's going on. Yeah, right, okay. Neutral observers. <laughs> right, okay. Have you been to the other side as well? Or? Not yet, no. no. I feel like this side's a lot, you know, friendlier towards, like, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The other side tends to be, like, you know, quite aggressive, kind of. Yeah. They came across as rather shouty and I didn't really want to sort of, you know, go over there and get too okay, close. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's fair enough. I personally think it's trending more towards acceptance like, trans people. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, a bunch of my friends are trans and they've been saying in you know, the last couple of years or so, um, they're feeling a lot more comfortable with sort of being out in public. Okay. Um, I, I just think it's a real shame that, you know, you've got people like this coming out and sort of screaming over them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what you think. Yeah, I think for the vast, the, the very least, I feel like for the vast, vast majority of trans people, they just want to live their lives. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that other side are taking like the absolute like worst one or two examples and trying mm -hmm. to paint the whole community like that. Yeah, okay. Which is, I think, is the textbook definition of bigotry. And while I'm not like super involved in this sort of thing normally, I would say I sort of generally lean more toward just let, live and let live. today because we just simply believe as our poster says that a man cannot become a woman and we don't accept what's called transgender ideology we think it's about protecting children and protecting childhoods well it's it's the claim that a man can become a woman or a woman can become a man that's the the ideology and it extinguishes the idea of sex and uh, sex as a biological uh, reality it's the idea that you you are what you identify as, uh, independent of reality. You know that gender is a construct. You know it's 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 a biological fact. You know. I've spoken to one or two people at the other side, and what they're saying is that they'd just like to get on and live in peace, etc. We are all for that as yeah. well, but, but it's imposing an ideology on our children and on society at large and, and on freedom for women's spaces, etc. I think yeah. parents need to say in what's taught in schools yeah. and sex education should include education about right and wrong and moral values and um, what, what families believe and not what the state wishes to teach. Mr. Meadow, what yeah. brings you here today? Well, obviously this rally here, uh, the Standing for Women, Let Women Speak event. Um, that's been going around uh, Bristol, Manchester, London every month, Leeds, Newcastle, so and now Glasgow. How do you find Glasgow? Oh, I love it. I love it. The people are so friendly. I mean, I've been here twice for similar events, uh, nearly two years ago. Um, 
I, I love the people, super friendly. I love the accents. They, they all call me Mano, <laughs> which I love. And um, it's just great to see this crowd here today. It, it feels much more gung-ho here than, than in other places, which must be a Glaswegian thing, I guess. That's what a lot of people say. They just want, they're just people who want to live their lives. But what does that mean? That means that a man can use women's toilets. That's what it means. It means violating women's boundaries on the daily and, and normalizing it. So it's never just about living your life, just living your life peacefully, because it, we don't live in a little bubble. We live in a society with other people. So, and, and if these men, you know, and some of them, they, they might look, you know, nice and pretty, feminine, whatever, but others don't. Others have beards and men, most of them have penises. So just living your life, it, no, taking your penis into a woman's toilet is not about just living your life. It's about saying women don't deserve their own spaces. Well, they, the UK government served the Section 35, which means they vetoed the bill. I mean, how the bill got through anyway is, is just... It's because all those political parties that voted for it have been captured by this nonsense. And in a way, the timing of this whole double rapist situation couldn't have come at a better moment because it's come hot off the heels of that, of that Section 35. This is where the gender shit is hitting the fan, you know, and it was inevitable it's be, uh, since 2014. Um, and even though I often say, oh my God, this is bonkers, it's madness, actually, it's been strategic. So the reason why in 2014 the Scottish prison system changed their policy and allowed men into women's prisons is because of the work of the Scottish Trans Alliance, which at the time was run by somebody called James Morton, who is a woman, okay? But she thinks that she's a man. Legally, she's now male, but you know, that already shows you how crazy this is, that a woman can be legally the same as me. Um, she, they strategically selected women's prisons, where you get some of the most vulnerable women in society, because they th they said and it, they've admitted this right they've written about it that if they could convince um, the housing of males in the female prison estate they could then convince men to be allowed access to women's spaces everywhere they purposely chose the most some of the most vulnerable women in society because who cares about them right and then once they got it into the prison system then they did it in the NHS. Then they started pushing this stuff out into schools. It's been a strategic decision and it's been in place since 2014. So a lot of us are playing catch up with what the hell happened and how did we get here? And obviously it's, it's the, you know, the, the rise of, of social media. It's, it's all about the internet. Um, if I was a 13 year old today with a mobile phone and TikTok, I'd be on the other side. I, I would be a pen gender demigirl or something and I'd be knocking on the gender clinic's doors. And if my parents said, mate, you're a bloke, I would say you're transphobic, you know? Um, and that's why I'm on this side now, because I see the dangers of it. And I've just been to the other side to just have a look. And half of the crowd are just really unhappy, unhealthy looking girls who think they're boys. So walking up there, I felt kind of rebellious. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to say lesbians don't get penises. But then when you actually see them face to face, it just breaks your heart. And so that we're actually here for them, but they don't realize that. Lesbians don't have penises, gay men don't have vaginas, humans can't change sex, trans women are men, and trans men are women. No, it's been going on for a while. There's, uh, there's, uh, uh, we had Karen White in the UK who was sexually assaulted two women. Last time I was in Glasgow, I met some female prisoners who told me that they'd heard um, uh, inmates having sex in the cell next to them. Uh, they said that the inmates walk around with, uh, with their tackle out. It's, it's been going for a while because all these uh, institutions have been captured by Stonewall, who told them a version of the law that isn't actually the law. So. Um, you know, and also an extraordinary thing is that they they deliberately started in prisons because they knew no one would care about female prisoners, and they thought if they used that as a kind of starting point, they could introduce self ID in the rest of the country. That's why it's been going on without anyone knowing until Isla Isla uh, what's her name? Yeah. What's his name? <laughs> Adam Graham. 
yeah, that's exactly what I've, we've all been worrying about. We've been fighting for five years trying to tell people some obvious truths that men are a danger to women, that men are, are physically uh, stronger than women and shouldn't be in their sports. All these things that people know, but for some reason are pretending they don't know. Um, and it takes like a, a big, it, apparently it takes a big scandal, like the Adam Graham scandal, to wake people up. Uh, I'm just glad that they got him before he did anything. Uh, you know, we weren't so lucky with Karen White, you know, Karen White assaulted two female prisoners. But, um, you know, it's just one, it's one of those weird movements that it, it advances until it's caught. And then when it's caught, it goes, oh, well, we never thought this would happen, you know. I think I think it's going to. I think this these crowds are going to get bigger and those crowds are going to get smaller. Um, but it's still going to be a bit of a force. Like the, the, the capture within institutions is just unbelievable. Um, and also the way that the Overton window has shifted so far that you have politicians posing in front in front of signs that ask for the decapitation of their political enemies. It, it's. Um, I, I don't think it can it can bear much more. And I genuinely you don't know how Nicola Sturgeon can survive this. So I think when she, if she gets ousted, she'll be the first politician to be to suffer because of this ridiculous belief. And I think that will be a big nail in its coffin. You know, write to your MP, write to your school. Uh, you know, make sure that your school isn't isn't indoctrinating the kids in, in, into gender ideology. Uh, make sure the MP. Your MP is following the Equality Act, um, you know, and, and also support anyone who's, who falls foul of this. I just met a guy there who, who was cancelled and lost a lot of work, nearly lost his business because of it. Um, but, you know, he rallied through and now he's here surrounded by friends. So, you know, if we all stick together, we can, we can get through all this nonsense. It's a great turnout, as you can see the turf side, um, some quite amusing posters, nothing threatening, there's a really nice atmosphere, it's very empowering. There are women here who've never been on a demonstration in their life, not at all political, but feel motivated and angry about the GRR that they've come to Glasgow to make their feelings known. And it's, it's a really great atmosphere. Well, we've all heard the term a perfect storm and that's exactly what has been created uh, with the uh, double rapist debate that went on and, and shone a, a light into Cornton Vale prison. And of course, Section 35, the GRR. It, I think it's quite ironic that uh, the leadership of the government, i.e. Nicola Sturgeon, has been destabilised, definitely hold below the waterline, uh, because of the actions of a double rapist who claims to be a woman, a trans woman. It's ludicrous that we're in this situation in the 21st century where we're having to debate what is a woman. And it's a, a nonsense debate. It should never have come to this stage. When you look how far the independence movement has progressed since Alex Salmon stood down, um, it hasn't progressed one iota. If you look at the front pages of the national newspaper, the pro-independence newspaper in Scotland, um, every few weeks there was a front page, now is the time, get ready, it's happening, it's here. All of these, and we all marched up the hill getting ready for independence and then we were all marched back down again. And frankly, people got fed up and the independence movement has not moved forward one iota since 2014. And, you know, the referendum was achieved with six SNP MPs in Westminster. At the height of her power, Nicola Sturgeon had 56 MPs and was still no further forward, um, which makes it certainly fuels the conspiracy theorists who say that uh, oh Nicola Sturgeon is deep state she's never wanted independence um, which is probably rubbish but it has fueled the conspiracy theories 
the campaign to win back women's rights has been taken away um, and by the Women Won't Wish campaign and they've done a brilliant job and as long as uh, they're fighting on our side I know that uh, we will now be able to focus on what the Aleppo party was formed for and that was for independence so it's onwards and upwards this should never have been headline news there are very many of us that have understood the implications of gender ideology for several years and it's only unfortunate that it's now that, uh, that the wider public are beginning to understand what's going on. But I think that that's in part because the media have been reluctant to publicise these matters because they too have been slightly taken in by some of the hype that there's been around this. Um, yes, it's very easy to distinguish between what a GRC does and doesn't do and to muddy the waters in the context of references to the 2004 Act or the Equality to 2010, but the reality on the ground is that the Scottish Government last year argued and successfully argued that from their perspective a GRC alters legal sex for all purposes and if that is interpreted on the ground as being the case then there are very serious implications for single sex exceptions and for single sex spaces particularly in relation to medical care um, care at home for example where people might want to be treated by a carer of their biological sex, not their legal sex, and there are clear issues in relation to changing rooms, segregation of pupils, um, for example, at school, in toilets and school changing rooms for sports and related purposes. So I would wholeheartedly concur with Joanna Cherry's view expressed again today, not for the first time, that there should be a citizens' assembly where all of these matters can be looked at in the cold light of day, but in a calm, respectful atmosphere, without the hatred and the name-calling that has characterised this debate in the past few years.